Good afternoon and welcome to Woodcrafter's Corner. I'm coming at you from the future here with a completed project and in today's video I'm going to show you how to take this from a blank all the way to this painted chicken. I don't know if you could tell what it is, but let's get right to it. Corner. In today's video we're going to be whittling a chicken down from this cut out piece of wood. Now if you are curious on how to cut it out and to get it to this point, be sure to watch a video I made on it, all the ways you can do that. But for this, all I used was a coping saw and then this knife to get it down a little bit finer and closer to these lines. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. This is a beginner's level project and it's a lot of fun. And then afterwards we're also going to be painting. Now that part is optional for this. All you'll need is a good knife or two. I prefer this size. This is a flex cut detail knife. And without further ado, let's just get right to it. The first step is to get in on these lines here, especially around the face, a little bit closer. I have started, obviously, but let's go ahead and keep working. And around the head here a little bit, I'm just going to come through and carve this out. This is where it's really nice to have a smaller blade because these kind of close corners are really difficult to do with something that's this size, I'm sure you can see. So this makes it a lot easier. Now, of course, this is about the width that I've used and uh, maybe maybe half an inch or so uh, in width. And if you have a piece of wood lying around, you can cut that down with a saw or with even an ax. If you have one and you're really good with it, might as well use it. But all I'm doing is just getting in a little bit closer to the pattern. By the way, I got this pattern from a book called Whittling in Your Free Time. I'll leave a link for that down in the description. And it's kind of nice. It's They're all really basic carvings. Um, it's, it's a pretty good book. My only caveat with it is that, especially for beginners, I don't think the pictures necessarily show everything as clearly as it could. It's definitely not bad, and it's definitely doable. But I uh, have had a little bit of tri trial and error getting it to look exactly like the pictures on some of those. And this is just one that I really liked for the patterns, which it includes something like this, very simple, but it's just nice to be able to print that off and uh, use a, whatever method to transfer it to your carving. And what I, all I did was use some carbon paper after printing it off on my printer at home. So pretty easy. Transferred it on, used a coping saw to cut it out, and now here we are, just really getting into the details of it. It's hard, especially with something of this size, to get into these little spots with a coping saw. And by the way, I am going to leave this bottom section here for the very last, because given how narrow it is down here with the pattern, it probably will break off pretty easily if I'm not careful. So I'm just not going to worry about it for now, and I'll come back to it later. So all I'm really doing is coming in from two different angles and given the direction of the grain right now this is actually pretty difficult to do. So I have to kind of take it slow and it's always better to take off a little at a time than a whole bunch at once. Alright that's looking decent and that's one down. This is probably going to be the most tedious part. But then again when you're whittling nothing's tedious because it's all part of the experience. Now, if you were to buy the book or just draw this simple design of a chicken on a piece of wood that you have, you can make it bigger, and that may make these smaller, at least for me, what's a smaller detail, um, quite a bit easier because it gives you more room to maneuver. But that's totally up to you. I personally like the smaller size carvings, but in my experience, it does take just slightly more skill to do the smaller whittlings. Now we want to do this before anything else because as we whittle along we probably will start to carve away the outline and this just makes it easier to see what we're planning especially when the outline is gone. Mm -hmm. 
Now at this point, you have to be really careful because if you push hard, even though we are working against the grain so it's unlikely, it is easy to just break this off, to snap it off, so don't push too hard. Instead, use techniques like this, as you see here, just these small movements. All right, so that'll about wrap it up for the back of the tail feathers here. And so now I'm just going to take off a little bit here. That's good. The next step will be to work on the head here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Being a little more careful because we don't wanna mess up that beak. To keep it even, I'll take this and just draw that to show where the beak is. And maybe this to show where the middle of the beak area stops. And that just helps me keep on track here. This is a good example of why it's so important to have very sharp whittling knives. Not only are they less frustrating, especially when working with difficult sections of the wood like this, and this is basswood, which is one of the softest woods that you can use really for carving, so for this to be somewhat difficult, especially around these details, just goes to show the power of working with grains. And. I don't think that's a slogan that'll catch on anytime soon, but if your knife is sharp, it's just a lot easier. And to be honest, whittling can be frustrating if you're working with a dull knife, because you're like, why am I not making any progress? Why is this so difficult? And I've seen that come up quite a bit. So the next step will be to draw a line around the middle here, and this will serve to guide us to the midline. And so I make this fairly light because we have done so much of it. In fact, I'm just going to skip this part and this part, but I am going to come around here. And the reason is because we're going to have a few sections where we're taking off some from both sides and we want to make sure to meet in the middle. And you'll see what I mean by that. Um, but using a pencil is good because you can erase it or you can um, scrape it off pretty easily. And then the next step is to bring out the tail a little bit. So where the body kind of stops will be around here, I would say. Yeah, let's say there. And then we'll do the same thing over here. So I'm kind of nice because we have these notches. So I've got down to this one and this one here. So right around here, we wanna make a mark and then push in. Now be very gentle here. The harder you push, the more dangerous. So I'm just gonna rock back and forth. I am pushing, but it's never out of my control. So I did that. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And I'm supporting the other side, if you'll notice, with my finger here. Don't just leave your finger under the body only for some reason, like this maybe, because then it probably will break off. Now we're gonna make these small little cuts. So using the center line to help us, we're going to make a small cut here, 
and it's super easy to do because we're working with the grain now and then it just pops out like that like a giant stop cut now I'm gonna make it a little deeper because we're gonna need to do it again but first I'm gonna do it on this side and if you're more comfortable take off just a little at a time it's safer to do that anyway as far as the carving goes but just a slow and controlled movement there we go look at that now here's where the midline comes in handy as you can see it started to go a little bit crooked here but that's all right because it's easy enough to fix i know where i need to take some off now of course i just eyeballed that midline so it's not a huge deal if you don't do that and you just eyeball it anyway but i find that it's helpful So that is about all I'm going to take off on that side, because as you can see, it's starting to get a little uneven. So I'm going to take off a little bit more on this side. We don't need to make it perfect right now, because we'll probably be coming back to it. But there we go. We can use this opportunity to clean that up a little bit looking good all right now the next step is to take off a little bit to narrow up the uh, upper part of the body here so i want to leave this mid portion a little bit wider but i do want the head to be narrower so all we're going to do is start to goodbye lines uh, take off a little at a time like that and we're just working towards getting this a little bit narrower so do be careful because these marks that I've made, at least in my case with this guy, are pretty small for the beak and the wattle. So be slow and careful if yours looks the same. And we don't need to do much because of course it's not the most realistic chicken in the world. And that is not a bad thing. That's pretty much all I wanted to do, so we'll leave it at that. Now, real quick, let's take this beak and point it at out, point it a little bit here. So I'm making extremely small marks here, just to take off a little bit of this beak. And of course, the way I have it, it is really small. So if yours is bigger than this, you'll have an easier time of working here, but if yours is like mine, the key is to be very controlled in these tiny movements, and as always, to have a sharp knife. So that is pretty well cleaned up. Now the next step, now that I've slanted the head the way I want it on these sides here, is to mark where we want the wattle to be on top. I think that's what it's called. And that's going to be right here or so. Same thing over here. Yeah. And then we're going to need to push in just like we did with the tail, but being even more careful here to support with the other side. So this will give us a little bit of a distinction on the head. 
And it does help if you have a short knife here, but you can also do, if yours is a little longer, two marks, one this direction, like this, and then another one in this direction. Hopefully you can see it like that. Okay, but I'm gonna go back to using this. Now that we've made that mark, we just need to separate it, taking off those tiny, tiny layers. And uh, once again, I cannot stress how controlled these cuts need to be. So take it slow and just enjoy yourself. Okay, do the same thing over here. Hopefully you can see as I do this. It's kind of hard to choose angles that are good for viewing as well as easy to cut, or at least doable. But it's worth it. Okay, and then I just round those out like this. All right, so there's our waddle. What a good one it is. All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and take care of this that we've left for last. And all that involves is just similar to what we did on the tail feathers and the head. Make these little moves. It can help with these corners or like half loops here, whatever you call them, <laughs> I don't know, is to, um, as you're pushing in and turning, just slide. So it gives a, a little bit more smoothness when you're doing it that way. Now let's do the same thing over here, being very careful. Now I probably won't end up making it this deep. I think it's all right on this side, but I think I want it to be just a little bit wider for stability's sake. But you can choose to do whatever you want if you like the idea of it being a little narrower, um, then that's totally fine, especially if it's a larger one. And that is probably good for me. So the reason we started doing that is because the next step is to separate this out a little bit. So to do that, we'll take this, make a mark here. And then just like before, being very careful because we're working directly between the grain's fibers here, so we'd have to be extra careful not to push too hard. I'm barely pushing it all here, just rocking. It's, it's super easy. And then come down to it, still being careful. Rocking. And that's about as far as I'm gonna go on either side. Same thing here, make sure it's level or even. But yeah, I guarantee if I were to push at all with this hand beyond just rocking it, we would see the end of that pedestal.
All right, and so yeah, the idea is just to give this kind of a separation here, and I think that serves its purpose pretty well. Maybe I'll take out a little more here to match, and there we go. That looks pretty good. Now, for the fun part, this is in the flat plane style. We want to take basically every point where straight lines intersect. And those would be all right here, making just light ones, light uh, markings. And if they're not perfectly straight because of how you whittled, like in this case for me, then just pretty much you can tell where they're supposed to be. I hope that makes sense. But the idea here that we're making these marks with is just to give us an idea of where to make our next marks. So let's go over what I mean by that. Um, so since flat plane is kind of like an unfinished look, here's a good example of a flat plane mark. We're going to push down everywhere we've made these little markings. So they're really just guides. And then we're going to meet up with them like it's a stop cut, because it is. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing to the other direction, and from the other direction. And so, yeah, that just gives us an idea of how we want to make our cuts. So if you want to do it without those markings, that's totally fine. Or if you want to do it in places where there aren't markings, that's also totally fine. And you can make these as deep or as shallow as you want. There's a little bit of a deeper one. And it's just really up to you. So that's what I'm going to do now, is go around and just kind of make these wherever I think would look good. While well, also being careful when working with the different grain directions to not overdo it. Perfect. So you can see what we're going for here. All right, and that gives us a great idea of what we're looking to accomplish here. And then I'm going to narrow this out a little bit, actually. There we go. This is where everything kind of ties together. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side.
All right, so the last kind of finishing touch I want to put on this is to make this uh, a little bit smaller. So that's a little bit there. Or maybe you could call it a little bit more angled inward. Not really sure why, I just think that looks better. There's a little bit, and I kind of already did it on the other side, but there's a little bit more. All right, so that is it for the whittling portion, and now it's time to move on to the next step. All right, if you stuck around this long, now it's time to paint. And these I got on Amazon in a kit, so it's pretty inexpensive and it comes with three paint brushes. And for little projects like these, these work really well. And I'm gonna be using black for the eyes, brown for the base, this kind of yellowish orange for the beak, or whatever you call it, reddish for the uh, wattles, and then white for the body. So to, all I'm gonna do is put that out on this piece of paper.
after drying, this is the finished product. So we have the chicken, and now it really does look like one. Uh, this is a pretty beginner project. It was a lot of fun. I didn't expect to enjoy painting it as much as I did. This is actually the first one that I have painted. And so there you have it. If you found this video helpful or if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving me a like. It really helps me out a lot. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.